Welcome everybody to the joy of base building. Base building is the most important- I hate this channel. No! No! Base building is the most important and essential part of RimWorld. So important that some people decide to get a little excited over it. Oh my golly, that base. What, what the heck? Ah! The shapes, materials, decor, features, symmetry, and efficiency is what defines the perfect base. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present to you this video to assist you with beautiful base building. Now when building, you want to choose your type of base you mainly want to structure around, such as a superstructure which saves space, is resistant to toxic fallout, and has good temperature control, but on the contrary, it can easily be burnt down if it's all made out of wood. Now for settlements, the pros is that it's patchy, so it doesn't require one huge plot of land to be easily built upon, and also rooms can be shifted. But it has the worst temperature control, which can piss off your pawns. Finally is the mountain base, which is probably a favorite among the Rimworld community, as it has the best temperature control, easy to defend, immune to more, leaves more area for farm, uses less material, is resistant against toxic fallout, makes your parents love you. But on the contrary, once again, it takes time to mine out, negative mood without better floors can really take a toll on your prisoners, and finally, insectoids could be a problem. Now that we have covered the three different base types, I'm going to go in game and cover the numerous structures needed with advice on where and how you should build your structures for maximum performance and the most beauty. For my base, we will be building a super base with the materials listed on the screen. For storage, at the beginning just put everything in one room, but as you obtain chem fuel and mortars and explosives, or temperature demanding materials, make different sections divided by stone walls. I also recommend starting with a 13 by 15 room so you can maximize the use of eventual trade beacons. At the beginning of the game, make a barracks so everyone has a place to sleep and add tables for a place that they can eat. Don't use a barracks beyond the beginning because of the disturb sleep debuff. For bedrooms, make an 8x8 room and start out with a bed, dresser, lamp, and an end table for maximum comfort. Later on, add in nicer flooring and better objects such as sculptures, but I prefer sculptures over plant pots because if you have a huge colony, growers will constantly be sowing the plant pots. I would recommend your freezer and kitchen be adjacent for efficiency and speed. Provide the right amount of coolers for your freezer, just pay attention to the temperature as you expand and add in coolers as the temperature gets hotter. For the kitchen, I personally like the nutrient paste dispenser for a number of reasons. Oh yeah, that's good. Kind of a funny aftertaste though. With that being said, make sure that your flooring is sterile tiled to avoid food poisoning and put your butcher table in a different room that the stove is to avoid a mess. Dining rooms aren't rocket science. Make them look good with proper amount of tables and chairs to support your colonists. Put the dining room next to your freezer so the colonists can eat their meals quickly and get them. Also, combining your dining room with rec items will serve your room as a dual use for your drug parties, making them very effective. If you have a super base, include a courtyard for your pawns to enjoy the outdoors with flowers and maybe even throw in some sculptures. This is also where you can store your mortars and send dead bodies for goodwill to other factions with your transport pods. A regular research bench is good enough for your Neanderthal colonists in the early game, but as you progress, make a room big enough to put in your multi-analyzer along with your research table and also add in some sculptures to make the environment more beautiful as your colonists will be in there for a long time, and sterile tile as the cleanliness improves research speed and also gives your scientists a more better viewing experience. Are you seriously watching by yourself? 
No, I'm with the science team. For your workshop, put it adjacent to the storage so you can get back and forth to make items easier and put some workbenches in there and bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a sweatshop. For your armory, if you have an armory, place it away from the prison so prisoners don't get to the weapons and armor easily during a prison break and just completely wipe out your colonists. But also you want to place it near your entrance so your colonists can equip the armor to defend against those naked tribals with rock hard throbbing clubs. For your hospital, they're vital for tending and surgeries as they provide boosts to treatment, immunity, health, and recovery. Hospitals should be easily accessible with auto doors and decked out with at least hospital beds, sterile tile, and shelves with medical supplies. Later on, add in vital monitors, end tables, sculptures, and TVs so the resting colonists can get better buffs for comfort and recreation while they're waiting for those new bionic legs for the two years that they're sitting there. For your prison in the early game, just make some 4x4 rooms with a sleeping spot for prisoners, but in the mid game, you want to become a little bit more advanced. For recruitment, give each prisoner their own average size cell with decent decorations, a bed, and a dining set. With this style, it is recommended that you have a dedicated warden or jailer bring them food to the prisoners and interact with them. For the other way, start with one room filled with your enemies, the comrades that fell to your colony's defenses, bring them into the prison and leave them for their comrades to feast upon. When they run out, then you harvest the prisoner's organ. When upgrading your crop fields, you want to make sun lamp rooms and maximize the zone of the sun lamp and put in a heater to constantly grow crops. If you're rich enough, invest in hydroponics for like rice and potatoes and fit them all into this one room with this layout to grow a total of 96 total crops with 280% growth speed. Don't make too many of these rooms though because you will need 4,580 watts of power total for each room. One of these rooms could require five generators, or two geothermals, or three solar panels, or two wind turbines, or 572,500 hamsters on a wheel to operate. Having animals can be very beneficial to your colony. I usually don't pay attention to dogs and cats because they provide no benefit to the colony, but animals like muffalos, alpacas, and boomalopes provide resources and they eat vegetation. If you have animals that can graze most of the year, just assign a close zone to the colony and assign them to it so they don't eat all your food and starve your colony to death. Also, wall off your zone if you're breeding the animals so baby animals or small animals you have don't get clapped. The last aspect we are going to cover is power. Power can be approached in different ways and I'm about to release some 400 IQ setups. First, start off with a wood fire generator or two is normal, but you don't want to continue this as cutting wood and refueling could be a problem. Boy, didn't I tell you to refuel that generator earlier? But upgrade to some chad solar panels and throw in a couple of turbines which don't get blocked off by the panels and produce a huge amount of power. If you end up taming boomalopes, three boomalopes with provided enough chem fuel for four generators. For power storage, this is where things get interesting. Always have a regular battery room surrounded by stone walls, but also invest in a separate battery room with full batteries connected to the other conduits with a power switch between them, flicking off the switch. So in case your conduits take a dump and your insane amount of power is gone, you can flick on the backup batteries. Defenses are also a part of base building, but I'm gonna save those for another video or you're gonna have to buy the $20 defense DLC.